about subject in terms of topic? How do you decide this is this is an area I want to spend a lot of time on? Lauren, what about you? Imelda Marcos, why did she cry out to you? <laughs> I mean, Imelda Marcos was kind of a natural subject for me from, I've been looking at wealth and consumerism and materialism over the last 25 years in my photography and filmmaking. And so she was always this kind of iconic reference point, like even when I film Jackie Siegel's shoes, I'm thinking about Imelda Marcos, but I actually did not know that she was alive back in Manila mm -hmm. and had become a congresswoman again until I read this article in Bloomberg by this reporter, William Malore, that was actually about this animal island that she created. Oh, and that's mm -hmm. the thing that got me hooked. People knew about the shoes, but the ultimate extravagance to me was depopulating mm -hmm. an island in the South China Sea, kicking off the indigenous people, and bringing in exotic animals from Africa. So that's what got me hooked, but I guess like in all my films, it ended up being something very different and ended up really taking me down a political path and looking at money, which I looked at before, but really money as it relates to power and political dynasty and the kind of rewriting of history. I had a very unreliable narrator Ah, and in right. a way was savvier yeah. about the media than any of us. She said, perception mm -hmm. is real and the truth is not. Right. Mm -hmm. And she also said the media is more dangerous than the gun because the gun just kills you to the grave and the media kills you to infinity and beyond. Mm -hmm. So, um, and really had no character development because she kind of stuck to her story. Mm. And it was really the world around her that changed. And I think my view of her and relationship to her really changed as I realized how unreliable a narrator she was and also how dangerous it was that what seemed like maybe funny or um, frivolous in the beginning became deadly serious by the time she's aligned with Duterte. I'd like to hear about the editing room for you. What was that process like? Yeah, we had a lot of disagreements that I think in a way shaped the film because we were coming from such different places. The Animal Island was something that I always believed in and my editor just did not think it was gonna work. And in a way with the editing being writing, I kind of did the writing part and he really was kind of narrative and visual and just kept saying like, come back to the theme. We were editing for almost two years, which I've never mm -hmm. done before. And part of that was we didn't have an ending until Duterte was elected. Mm. And that mm -hmm. changed everything. You know, mm -hmm. the history repeating itself, going back to dictatorship. What started as a kind of almost historical film mm -hmm. became a kind of history of the present because the election yeah. mm -hmm. dredged up all of this history and so, we did it in a more nonlinear way where my editor, Per Kierkegaard, used to always say, like, don't tell things before you need to. Mm -hmm. So we could kind of withhold some information. Right. And so the martial law torture, you don't find out till quite late. And that kind of changes your whole feeling about the Marcos. Aren't we all historians around this table? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just think about our films. Well, you like, become an expert in your subject yeah, matter, too. I agree. Mean, yeah. well, I'm doing a degree on a we're, subject. Three years yeah. on a subject. I know everything about it. Yeah. Just before, just after. You've I mean, every yeah, time yeah, I see one of Alex's you know. films, I feel like you know more about that subject than anyone else on the planet. Um, how has the emergence of the streamers impacted the marketplace for your films? My last film was on Amazon. I think it went out to 150 million people. And the thing that I've done that was most seen was a little spot called Like a Girl that went out to over 200 million people. That's in terms of the audience, mm -hmm. but also in terms of the filmmakers. Like, we're at parity at this table, which is incredible. And I think that the diversity of the storytellers is just so much better now that there's so much opportunity from the streamers. And, you know, I feel like when I came to filmmaking late, because I came from photography, but mm -hmm. when I started, there was basically like a couple of outlets mm -hmm. and you had to kind of be liked by those particular people. And now there's just so many opportunities and so much mm -hmm. opportunity, I think, for diverse voices and for younger voices mm -hmm. and for 
um, different budgets, and it just seems like more democratic in terms of the storytelling and the access. Yeah.